Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of yours. Thank you for joining the productivity talk by the Asian Productivity Organization, APO, today. I'm Nobu Miyama from the APO Secretariat, and I will be anchoring the session today. The APO is an international organization committed to improving productivity in the Asia Pacific region. APO productivity talks provide a pro platform where innovative ideas for productivity enhancement are addressed by expert practitioners and academics. In today's P talk, we are diving deep into the issue of over tourism, which impacts cities, landmark, and natural wonders around the globe. Over tourism isn't just about crowded vacation spots. It's a complex issue affecting local communities, environment, and even the sustainability of very places we love to visit. It's crucial to understand that over tourism concern all of us on a global scale. Each of us, whether a tourist or a resident in a tourist heavy community, holds a stake in this matter. Now, I'd like to introduce today's special guest speaker, Dr. Alan Wong, the founder and consultant of GND Hospitality Tourism Educational Consulting from Hong Kong. Welcome, Dr. Wong. It's our pleasure to have you with us today. Good morning from Hong Kong. I'm Dr. Alan Wong. Before we start, let me briefly share your background with our viewers. Dr. Wong completed his PhD in Hotel and Tourism Management from Hong Kong Polytechnic University. With over two decades of experience in education, he's been a lecturer at Hong Kong Polytechnic University, specializing in a wide range of subjects from human resource management in hotels and tourism to ecotourism. In addition to academia, Dr. Wong has real world experience He's the founder of the consulting company, and he has hands-on industry experience, having worked in roles such as business development and project manager for the Euro-American Amusement Park in Shanghai. It's our honor to have such a multifaceted expert with us today. Our viewers and I are very enthusiastic to learn more from you about today's topic. Please start your presentation. Thank you. Good morning again. Uh, I'm Dr. Ellen Wong. Uh, the topic I'm going to share with you all is about over tourism uh, as a potential short and long term solution. Uh, first, I give you an outline of my talk. Uh, I will introduce the issue of over tourism very briefly and then discuss. Uh, UNWTO strategy for coping with this issue. And I will give you cases and examples that I'm more familiar with. First of all, I just like you to look at these uh, photos, right? This is a famous church in uh, Paris, uh, Secret Hut Church. And if you see from the top, you can see this good view. But if you look clearly, you see all these people down here. And uh, what I'm trying to say here, actually, I, uh, I was uh, saying in, uh, in Chinese, but why I say I am not happy here because of this uh, crowd of people here, it impact on my experience of my uh, uh, travel to this destination. So over tourism is really an issue that we need to pay attention. So over tourism in short occur when there are too many visitors to a destination. So to give a more formal, defin uh, formal def uh, definition, it is the impact of tourism on the destination or part of it that excessively influences perceived quality of life of citizens and or quality of visitor experience in a negative way. So you see, it will affect the life of uh, citizens and uh, give them a negative uh, impact. And in fact, this is a complex issue with interaction of societal, economic, and ecological uh, factors together. 
And this is a multi-dimensional complex issue. Perhaps there are some uh, short-term and long-term solutions, right? But uh, there's a no code fix for this solution. And uh, let's uh, have a look on this uh, different uh, strategy that we can help to deal with it, right? So they are all together by UNWTO proposed 11 uh, strategy. I will go through this one by one and give you some example. So the first strategy is to promote uh, the dispersal of visitors within the city and beyond. That means to develop some uh, visitor part of the city, not many people visit, less visit, right? I think Hong Kong has a good example is the Hong Kong Wetland Park. Now, you know that Hong Kong is very crowded place and we have a 7.5 uh, uh, million of uh, uh, people living in Hong Kong, get high rise and uh, got a lot of tourists each year. And we develop a world, try to develop a world-class wetland park. It's the ecotourism project. The objective is to diversify the range of tourist attraction, also diverse visitor experience. So this is how we deal with uh, over tourism issue uh, through this uh, first strategy. The second strategy is to promote limited base dispersal of visitor. For example, we try to promote experiences during all peak months using promote dynamic pricing and stimulate event in uh, off-peak months. Now, for example, during June to September, this is the low season, right? We give a lot of this uh, discount to attract people to travel in low season. And we use uh, some special event, like example, during this uh, kind of low season, we have a dragon boat. And it's an amazing kind of event. Next strategy is to stimulate new visitors, itineraries, and uh, attractions. For example, we try to produce some city guidebooks highlighting uh, hidden treasures to create a kind of dynamic experiences and routes for niche visitors. And we stimulate develop of a guide tour to less visitor cities. Now, this is a guidebook that produced by the Hong Kong uh, Tour Guide Association. Uh, actually, I'm an advisor for this uh, organization. And they have a guidebook to help people to learn more the cultural tours there. I actually have a two article in Chinese to talk about this tram tour. Actually, to travel by tram is a very good experience. Uh, Hong Kong, we are very crowded area, and we call the kind of eco tourism we promote urban eco tourism. So next time, if you want, I will highly encourage you not just go shopping, but just go and try this uh, 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 tram tour. It's a very good enjoying. Uh, experience as a kind of a slow travel, slow tourism. That's what we call. The next strategy is to review and adapt regulation. What this means is to carry a kind of analysis and study uh, about the carrying capacity, right? So you can look at the picture here. I took it about uh, two weeks ago in Macau. This is a famous kind of a church uh, in Macau. It's full of, uh, of tourists to take pictures, to share in their social medias. So you see all the streets are crowded, all along the shop are uh, trying to, uh, people to buy souvenirs and a lot of tourists are from mainland China. And uh, it, it's a bit, uh, noisy in uh, walking around this street. Again, it's not giving us a very good experience as well. So according to uh, the Institute of Tourism Study, IFT, 
uh, they carry a kind of a carrying capacity study in 2017, right? According to their study, they thought that the optimum tourism carrying capacity of Macau should be less than 110,000 people per day, okay? And less than 40.1 million per year, right? However, according to this study, right, in 2017, out of the 104 days, there were 20 days that they exceed the optimum carrying capacity. So this will affect tourist experience, right? If you get too many people going to a destination at the same time, that will affect the locals life, affect the tourist experience, cause a lot of pollution and all this issue, right? So what this uh, institution, after they carrying this ca carrying capacity study, they suggested to the government that they should diverse visitor to second tier area by applying what we call smart technology or holding events while conducting very good in-depth research and study the background of, of visitor to understand their travel style. So uh, to build uh, uh, smart uh, uh, city is uh, important, right? Macau now also promoting uh, walking tours to let to let tourists to go to some less crowded places like non-UNESCO sports, right? Now this is uh, some of the uh, attractions that you we can promote, right? Uh, like this what we call cup. Uh, Mediterranean, okay? And this is a very historical uh, site that will visit rather than just going to this uh, popular church, a uh, UNESCO site in there. And then you see these is places, it's very beautiful and it's a not UNESCO site and they should uh, have a more promotion and a diverse people to go there. And then now, again, this is a very good site that they promote authentic Portuguese food. If you go to Macau, it's worth to visit to travel this uh, authentic uh, Portuguese food, very good dining environment. And the next strategy, what we want to uh, share about is to ensure local community and let the community benefit from tourism, right? And we help to increase the employment and we also have to bring positive impact to tourism and to create a kind of awareness among the local community about the benefit of tourism, all right? There's a good case study in India, okay? Now, actually, the Indian government, they promote responsible tourism, right, in this city, right? And what they want to use this uh, case study is that they try to make tourism as a tool for development of village, for the local community, and also help to uh, reduce poverty. If you know that UNWTO uh, millennium goal, reducing poverty is an important goal for them. And also they try to use this kind of responsible tourism to help women uh, empowerment and employment. So this is a good case that they try to involve with the local people and uh, benefit the community. Strategy seven is to create city experience that benefit both residents and visitors. For example, that is to develop the city to fit with residents' need and desire and consider tourists a temporary resident. I think Barcelona is a good example, right? Uh, Barcelona, they want to uh, 
solve this uh, ecotourism is issue by making more sustainable activity, by changing the local people's mindset. The tourists are not tourists. They are actually a temporary residence. So change, by changing the mindset of the local people that they, they may fear there are so many tourists coming, they instead, they treat them as a local uh, temporary resident. So less conflict among the tourists and the locals. They are temporary residents. I think it's a good strategy uh, to, to, to do that. So strategy A, make city infrastructure and facilities. And again, we need to have a citywide plan for well-balanced, sustainable traffic, right? And we're creating uh, like a cycling rules and uh, making walking tour. I've been to Amsterdam myself, and Amsterdam is doing a very good job on this. Just look at these interesting uh, bicycles. I post this fake picture to my uh, Facebook and one of my colleagues from Japan say, thank you for sharing your interesting European experience. Various rides are very interesting. And I reply him that, yes, it's good because traveling by bicycle is a low, uh, low carbon transportation and they are eco friendly kind of transportation. So we, we need to promote this. And uh, Amsterdam is uh, doing a very good example. You see the how the local uh, uh, riding bicycle enjoying their, their, their riding. And there's a plenty of bicycle you can hide as well. All right. So strategy nine is uh, called communicate with and engage local stakeholder. Now, remember, when we organize a tourism activity, it involves different uh, stakeholders from the national government level, uh, uh, tour guides, uh, hotels, and uh, the local community. These are all the stakeholders. If you can involve these stakeholders together, let them communicate, right? And that will help to solve the problem, solve the conflict among the residents and uh, tourists and other related uh, professional. Well, the example in Philippines, in this city, Sagoda is a good example again, right? So how they deal with the over tourism issue? Again, by doing research very in-depth kind of uh, research by doing in-depth interview, focus group discussion, participant observation, informal uh, conversation, collect all these data to build big data. And also uh, absorbing all the stakeholder to integrate them in all the planning process, right? So it will help to do more communication and reduce the kind of conflict again. So it needs a lot of work, need a lot of good planning before you try to develop a good destination for tourism and to avoid uh, over tourism. Strategy 10 is to communicate and engage visitors. The most important thing is to educate the visitor, let them to aware of the different negative impact on the visitors, okay, uh, on the local, sorry. And they need to respect the local value, the traditions, the local regulations, right? So again, uh, Portugal uh, in this uh, Cobra, this city, uh, they are doing a good example, and uh, I will go through this uh, later. I'll give you more information uh, what about this case. 
And uh, last but not least, uh, the 11 strategy is set monitoring and response measures, right? We need to keep uh, monitoring about the seasonal fluctuation, the seasonal demands, the arrival and expenditure, the pattern of visitor attraction, and all this to build the big data and use new technology to help our planning, to help us to create a kind of contingency plan for pit periods, okay? Again, Barcelona is a good example to do it. For example, Barcelona published monthly focus of volume of visitor numbers, okay? And where when the focus go uh, over 70,000 of a visitor, they will in their calendar so red. So the local uh, uh, citizen, they will avoid that. I want to travel to the congested uh, uh, area or actually just don't go to the city, all right? So uh, this is a good strategy to help to diverse the local, not going to the tourist spot as well. So they will not be have a kind of a conflict among them, right? So just now, uh, I roughly uh, go through this 11 strategy. They might not be a perfect strategy, and, uh, but it helped to solve some of the immediate problems. Thank you very much, Dr. Won for your insightful and informative presentation, which helped us to learn about comprehensive strategy to tackle over tourism with your experience and insights. Now I'd like to move to Q&A session. I have three questions. My first question is, you introduced 11 strategy UNWTO introduced, but what are some of the other possible solutions to over tourism? Could you explain that with the slides you prepared? Well, thank you for your first question, right? Now, uh, actually, uh, the International Ecotourism Society, what we call TIES, uh, they said that ecotourism is the solution to the over-tourism, right? And they thought that over-tourism is not created by ecotourism, because they have ecotourism principle. If you follow the ecotourism principles, you will not have the over-tourism issue. And also, they thought that ecotourism, uh, they thought that the over-tourism, uh, tourism, that we should pay more attention to the people, to the culture, to the environment, and the natural resources of the community, not just to the traveler. All this, the local, the environment, and the community, they are part of the tourism. We're not just paying all the attention to the travelers. Now, at the moment, we are paying too much our attention to the traveler without paying attention to other stakeholders, okay? So, actually, these are some of the basic principles that we promote ecotourism. For example, when we talk about ecotourism, we try to minimize physical, social, behavioral, and psychological impacts. Right? We, we're not saying that we try to get away with it altogether, but try to minimize that, okay? but maximize the positive impact, minimize the negative impacts. We also try to build environmental and cultural awareness and respect. I mentioned this point earlier already. So we need to let the tourists very alert about our, their behavior, the consequence of their action and respect the environment and the local culture. And they should promote, promote a kind of positive experience for both visitors 
and the host. That is all uh, uh, ecotourism all about. Also, in ecotourism, we'll provide direct uh, financial benefits for conservation, okay? Uh, like what we call uh, collect this uh, a tourist tax, right? Okay, uh, the tax will help to uh, to to help conservation, and uh, that will help to uh, to collect the, the the tax. We can help to benefit the local and the industry. And when we talk about ecotourism, we we'll help to provide a memorable experience for the visitor through good interpretation, okay? And uh, we need to raise the sensitivity to the, uh, to the tourists to understand the host country political, environmental, and social climates, okay? When we design, okay, for like hotel, uh, this uh, resource or lodges, we try to build some local impact facility. We use the local material as well. And uh, last but not the least, we try to respect the indigenous people. We treat the indigenous people as our partner and create empowerment for them. And we have a lot of uh, destination right now that not paying good intention to the indigenous people. In fact, we need to promote all this to divert the tourists to this ecotourism, sustainable tourism, or responsible tourism. We create more new product related to this kind of, uh, of uh, tourism. And we thought that ecotourism is the future of our sustainable tourism activities. I'm not sure whether I have answered your question. And uh, I think uh, uh, we need to do more about uh, help people understand more. Thank you very much, Dr. Wong, for introducing ecotourism as one of the very effective solutions to over tourism. My next question is, do you think that technology can help to deal with the issue of over tourism? Please give us some examples. Yes, uh, I do think sometimes when we talk about technology, people are afraid of technology, and especially uh, this rural area, local community, uh, the villages people, when we talk about using technology, they are afraid of using technology to help tourism, to help promotion, right? Now, actually, there are a lot of uh, research now trying to... Uh, to, to use technology, to, to learn how to use technology to help, right? And uh, again, as uh, some Asian scholars, they, they, they claim that, that a lot of example being used and shared is about European or Western country example. So they do more study about uh, the Asian city cases and how we can fit in the sustainable aim by using technology. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of uh, cases, and I don't have time to share all this, but there's a one good strategy is what we call a smart city idea, all right? And again, this is a very competitive idea. Research are going to that, and uh, coming up, uh, there are many, uh, uh, many uh, conferences to, for scholars to talk about this, what we call smart city ideas, all right? Now, again, I use the example of Macau because that's uh, next to Hong Kong, uh, where I'm very familiar with, okay? And uh, there's uh, one uh, scholar in uh, Macau, he said, uh, Macau is already a smart city. We are on the top of the world already, okay? Uh, why he came there? Well, and I also, I explained, I experienced myself as well, right? So this is like a travel card I bought, all right? And you can use this travel card to travel on a property transportation of buses. And if you can shop in 7-Eleven, right? Uh, you for shopping as well, for eating as well in a restaurant. Now, 
uh, at the moment, uh, Macau already use uh, some kind of transportation app to manage, all right? And this is uh, manage uh, uh, the, the, the tourists, give them a lot of information, all right? So like uh, the bus situation, parking situation, road situation, and so on. So when the tourists get more information, they know where to go. They know where which uh, area is the less tourist, right? Avoid the, the peak hour, avoid the, the traffic jam area, okay? So this kind of technology not only help the tourists, again, it ha help the uh, locals to improve their quality of life. So technology help, right? And also tourists can uh, get the information uh, 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 for planning their different itinerary. And actually also technology can use what we call AR, right? Uh, techno virtual reality kind of, or let them, before they go to that place, they have a virtual experience. And, uh, of course, virtual experience cannot uh, replace to going to the destination uh, 100%, but at least they know the place already. Might be shorten the time to visit that that uh, that uh, that site because they already know uh, what they're going to see and how to look around, and that save time to to them on our site, and that will help the traffic or people have the flow as well. So I think uh, a smart city is, uh, is a future of our study and uh, more people are using more technology. But of course, it's expensive and you need to do a lot of a research study on that. Uh, actually, uh, this, the university where I, uh, I graduate and teaching for a long time called Hong Kong Poly U, they already uh, signing in contract with the Macau Telecom to do more big data analysis, okay? And uh, and uh, they do some kind of what we call a data mining, okay? Uh, and they not just helping Macau, but helping uh, the whole area, what we call greater Bay Area, uh, the whole area integrating Macau together, uh, and uh, at the moment, they pay a lot of attention to uh, use big data technology on all these things uh, to help improve Macau's uh, over tourism uh, issue. Uh, as well, I say, uh, this is only part of the uh, solution. And also there's a lot of uh, technical thing that I cannot share in such a short time. I'm uh, sorry that but if you, uh, people are interested in that, they can go to the reference and check uh, the Macau website. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Wong, for introducing an interesting case study of Macau to utilize smart city technology to minimize over tourism issues. My last question is, what do you think are the long-term measures to tackle these issues? No. Is it education could be a long-term strategy for this issue? Well, it seems that research are now research are now focusing on this area. There's a lot of uh, article research in this area right now. Uh, this is an example I mentioned earlier. This is an example in Portugal, right? The case study is that education as a long-term strategy for over tourism, right? Uh, the way how they do it is that they also use a World Heritage Site as a study ground, okay? And they thought that uh, by creating alternative differentiated tourism product to the neighboring or peripheral small town, that can capable of diversifying tourists and visitors from the site in uh, overload. That means just create some site next to the over tourism that 
side makes some similar activity and some very different activity for them to try. So you can attract them to that to that nearby side. Okay, emphasize on the cultural aspect. Okay, actually, eco tourism to a certain extent is what we call is a kind of cultural tour. Okay, and also when we talk about eco tourism, is emphasize on education and education to the, to the tourists, and then create a lot of activity for the tourists to participate, to experience, to try and taste. Okay, use their five senses five cents to experience the site, all right? That is what uh, they use different strategy, technique uh, to do it, okay? Like uh, uh, use your more ear to listen, okay? Close your eyes to feel it, oh? Have a deep breath, the air there. So it's different from the, 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 the popular, what we call mass tourism. Go there, take a picture and go. No, we go to an in-depth travel to experience the, the destination, to try the local food, to taste it, even do some home cooking with the locals all together. Let them mix together, right? There's a plenty, plenty of educational activity we can create to help people to understand more uh, the local. I travel a lot and uh, lately to uh, Indonesia to Philippines to participate in conference and uh, join the local uh, tour, right? And uh, uh, to the villages. They are very smart, okay? Actually, I don't have time to show a video that uh, if you can uh, join my Facebook, you see that uh, I have very deep experience that uh, uh, I joined a, a village uh, site that there's a villages that he is very skillful, can make a very good kind of souvenir to me, okay? And uh, very impressive and give me an unforgettable experience, all right? So uh, roughly I can uh, uh, share this and uh, with the limited time. And again, uh, this, again, I said that researchers are saying that this education as a strategy to tackle over tourism, in the next century, to a century. And as an education, uh, educational intervention is a, is a good way to help to solve the problem of uh, over tourism. I myself, as an educator for 30 years, when I travel, I also try to educate uh, myself. And I, I made video, actually, again, if you can go to my Facebook, I made video promoting cycling tours, okay? I have a, a video uh, to promote uh, uh, using bicycle travel in Sydney. I made a video in Hangzhou just a few days ago. I went to China, Hangzhou. I made a video about uh, use low carbon transportation material, a bicycle to travel around. And again, I thought that education is most important strategy. And uh, uh, kids should be educated uh, uh, when they are uh, uh, young, all right? So uh, maybe I have uh, my uh, concluding remark, okay? Saying that uh, as I beginning, I already shared that over tourism is a complex interaction of different societal, economic and ecological factor. And this is a multi-dimensional and complex issue. There is a no quick fix or comprehensive solution to the problem. I do believe that education could be a long-term strategy for over tourism. Uh, I think that's roughly I want to share with the, our audience. And if they are interested, they can follow up with the, all this reference. And uh, there's plenty of information out there. And uh, over tourism is a definition, a uh, very important issue. Uh, in fact, I watched a video yesterday from the news about uh, 
over tourism issue in Japan about uh, Fuji Mountain. Is it uh, 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 Miki, sir? Yeah, that's an issue in over tourism in Japan as well. Mount yes. Fuji? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Yes, now Mount Fuji and other uh, famous cities like Kyoto are facing the over tourism nowadays. So this P talk is very, very helpful. Okay, thank you. So I think that's roughly I want to share. And uh, thank you very much for the audience. Thank you very much, Dr. Wong. We understand that education is the most important key factor in addressing the issue of over tourism in long term, as well as in further promoting sustainable tourism. Okay, our time is up and we must close the session today. Thank you very much again, Dr. Wong, for the pre presentation and for joining us today. I'm sure that our viewers enjoyed it and were definitely well informed and inspired. Before closing our P talk, I would like to thank all our viewers once again and hope that you will continue watching us. See you in the next P talk. Goodbye.